history of Daywalker, go. Okay, so around December 2019, we started, no, 2018, shit. I keep forgetting 2020 happened, so I'm thinking three years in my head here. Ah, damn, whoa, shit. Toy Hall, okay, let me get this up. So Brittany, baby. Hey, Brittany, bitch. All right, so history of Daywalker. I came in originally as bass because I was in like a band called Sins of Motion before that I was in Ocean Grid. So when we started Daywalker, we put it together at the end of 2018. Uh, I started working. I think the first person I started working with was probably Greg because I've seen you. I seen you at just show somewhere, and then me and you started working. No, because we didn't have Eisler on bass or on vocals until me and you had already had some shit written on bass. Uh, Ronnie was living with me at the time, so he was playing drums, and we wanted to do something heavy again because I was currently playing in a indie rock band called Darker McKnight which is a great band go check them out if you want to uh if you like that kind of music cole love you buddy after that i was like okay whatever des is like hey you want to play bass for us i'm like sure let's play bass let me play bass let's write a few songs a few songs were great after that we got ronnie playing drums daywalker together originally it was me and eisler greg and ronnie um eisler wanted to do a little bit more singing stuff um andrew eisler was the vocalist of ocean grid uh we love you too eisler um and we just had a little bit of you know different views on what we wanted to do so Eisler said he was gonna go do some other stuff with Ocean Grid for a while uh, and then we got the old sandwich our cameraman back here on vocals and we did what I think it was like a six day tour with you seven day tour with you and we went out fucking and went through Wisconsin Ohio I think we went through Illinois Indiana uh, Iowa went all over the fucking Midwest in the middle of the freezing ass winter uh, it was our first tour together, and that shit was really fun. But when we got back, <clears throat> uh, James got real busy with his video and photo stuff, so, I mean, he obviously couldn't do it. It's always been me and Greg, though. Me and Greg have never left the band. And then after that, I remember it was around it was around March or April, and we were like, what the fuck are we going to do? We've got shows lined up all summer. We don't have a vocalist. So Greg just took the mic, and that was probably the best decision this band's ever made. No offense to anyone else that's been in it, but... Greg has more energy than all of you combined as a vocalist. In like, I guess, 2019, March, Dez is like, hey, we're looking for a vocalist. Let's go reach out for a vocalist. I'm like, okay, well, let me start screaming. So I start screaming. We looked at each other. He's like, yeah, you're singing. Voice went out for like a few days. I was at work like, ah, ah. Like, what have you been doing? I was like, been screaming. He's like, and you sound like a fucking 80-year-old man that's been smoking all your life. I'm like, I don't smoke though. So it's like, ah. Talk about your first show. My first show was in Louisville, Kentucky with Until the Dead Walks and what's that, a man? Uh, Take Your Lives. Or no. Uh, wolf skin. Wolf skin, yeah. I was so nervous. I was I didn't know what to do. I was on stage. I was like, ah, oh, next song. What's the next song? Yeah, next song um yeah, Des. Dead inside, yeah, next song, dead inside. Our drum at the time was Joe. He was just looking at me, he's clicking his drum. So shout out to Joe. I believe if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, James had quit that band and had to play bass for a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He had to quit it like James, we had yeah, just that was my first time James did bass fill in when we played Louisville. That was my first show. I was hella nervous, hella shaky, didn't really know what to do, didn't really know what to say. Got on stage and I like, you know, after a few shows I got used to oh, that's gross. After a few shows I got used to like the stage presence, the audience real interaction and shit like that. And from there on, I just, you know, took it to a, a quote-unquote neck, what was it, next level, as you would say, next level. But other uh, other than that, I love being a day walker. It was fun, writing lyrics, writing music, putting everything together, tours, people, especially the fans, especially everybody that, like, interact with us. Thank you guys and ladies for, you know, supporting us throughout these fucking troubling times when our bass has gone missing, our drummer's gone missing, another drummer's gone missing, another drummer's gone missing, another bassist, another drummer. But... Like that says, through and through, it's going to be always me and him on, in Daywalker, doing Daywalker stuff, Daywalker all the time. Um, so we spent the rest of that year, we picked up, uh, we had Bryant on drums, Bryant Sullivan, he plays in Fathom, love you Bryant. Uh, we had him on drums for about a solid year, and then he left and went to do his other band that he was already in, and then he came back again on bass like six months later, and then came back again on drums like another six months later. So we've had Brian off and on a lot and we appreciate and love everything that Brian did for us. Uh, if you listen to our new album, when it comes out, Cry Wolf, um, New Gods, Shinigami, were all written by Brian on drums. The other three were written, or the other four were actually written by uh, Joe on drums. And that kind of brings us to where we are now. We picked up John's young ass out of the middle of the fucking cornfields of Brown County somewhere, Adams County somewhere. and. We're about to take another journey with him, but at the end of the day, it's always Daywalker. It's always going to be me and Greg.